Hi, this is Luke from MGN, and today we're going to talk about Slay the Spire. As usual, our video reviews are brought to you by MGN.gg and Heartbeat Moments. What's MGN? That's us. That's the multi-gaming network. We bring you guides, news, and reviews, all the stuff you love on the games you love. Heartbeat Moments, that's something that we've developed to bring our blogs to life. If you want to read and watch about the same section of the video, and you're particularly interested in sound, gameplay of the story, you can click the time code in the blog and you'll be pulled forward in the video to your destination so that you can read and watch about the same section at the same time. It's cool, right? Alright, so let's get started with Slay the Spire. Slay the Spire is a roguelike game wherein the player progresses through a series of fights, treasure rooms, quest rooms, all in the goal of building a stronger deck to take on the next foe. Those of you familiar with Hearthstone's single player content, specifically dungeon runs, will already be pretty familiar with the gameplay found in Slay the Spire. It's a deck builder, really. It's got a charming art style, and the nature of gameplay can be very addicting. Each run can differ from the last, and you should get stronger each time you play, each run you progress through. But how does the game stack up against other deck builders and other roguelike games? Well, stick around, you'll see. As always, our MGN impressions are broken down into four separate but equal parts. First, story. Is there a story? Some roguelike games forgo this in lieu of better gameplay or more of a focus on gameplay rather than story. Is Slay the Spy in that group? If there is a story, is it engaging and is it interesting enough to keep us around for a while? Is it told well? Is it well written? We'll get there. Sound. Is there voice acting? If so, how is it? How are the sound effects? How's the sound track? Do all these sound elements fit well together and do they hit the ear right? Next is gameplay. How does the game feel to play? Are mechanics introduced well? Does it get boring or repetitive? Is the deck building intricate? Does it require strategy? Are the roguelike elements executed well? Do runs feel different? Do you feel like you're making progress? That's gameplay. X Factor? This is different from game to game and review to review. Slay the Spies is cost. Is it worth the money? Is what you get out of the experience in terms of fun and time worth the price of admission? You want to find out all the answers to these questions and more? Like I said in the intro, we'll get there. First is story. We're going to give story for Slay the Spire a 3 out of 10. What's disappointing about the Slay the Spire experience is there just simply isn't much story to go off. What is there is well written and the characters are likeable and interesting, but there's just no depth or content story wise. You have a game where the player takes control of four very different heroes and there's an opportunity for personality and interest there, but none is given. And this is a shame because clearly the writing staff have ability and a good sense of humour, with the buffing aid at the start of the game or the start of your run being a non-water dependent giant talking whale, but it's not put to good use. You can see the outline of something there as you run into non-encounter rooms and get some dialogue with those you find inside. But the overarching goal of Slay the Spire feels missing. I'm not advancing myself overall or progressing a story, so it can make the experience seem a bit pointless. Well, 3 out of 10 for having good writing for what's there, but simply just not having enough of it. Next is sound. We're giving sound a 4 out of 10. The soundtrack isn't anything special, I'll start there. The regular gameplay feels pretty uninspiring soundtrack wise. The inception doesn't make you feel like you're about to embark on this treacherous adventure, so you have to like bring your wits or get ready, it just makes you feel nothing. It's a background feature, something you can play without having the sound and lose no impact. If you have something playing in the background whilst you play Slay the Spire, you're not really missing much. Like I said, the soundtrack's lackluster, and the sound effects when you use skills don't really make those skills feel impactful. Your character is mute for the entirety of the run, I'd like to see some banter or some kind of player interaction there. So, so where's the voice acting? What's left just makes the game feel very empty and quiet and dead. Why haven't I given it a lower rating than 4? Because the boss soundtracks are epic. Do yourself a favour, look them up, and you'll get a sense of an epic battle ensuing. The problem is, it doesn't really translate to the rest of the game. I understand perhaps this was the vision of having everything building, sound wise, to the boss music crescendo, but it just isn't executed well enough. 4 out of 10. Next is gameplay. We're giving gameplay for Slay an 8 out of 10. This is what's won Slay the Spire such interest and prestige within its genre. 
It feels good to play and it's super addictive with a lot of replay value. Each run feels different from the last and it would take many an hour for the game to start feeling repetitive. There's enough difference between what you can build in a single character from run to run, but you're given four of them. It's a lot of diversity. The runs themselves are genuinely fun. You can get out of a run exactly what you put in. If you're not thinking ahead or planning, you get punished. In this genre, that's a good thing. We want there to be a need for strategy and forethought to enhance the depth of the game, and it is there. It's accessible to newer players of the genre, whilst being deep enough to, so that experienced players don't grow bored quickly. That's something a lot of studios try to do within this genre, but rarely do they pull it off well, and Slay the Spy does get it right, so credit where credit's due there. It's not flawless. Look, I'd like to see more cards in the game. At a point where, well, at the point where you unlock everything card-wise, it can be a little disappointing. It's, it comes a lot sooner than you think it would. Perhaps this is where, like, an update or a DLC or something that adds characters and cards would be good, but for the base game, for what you're paying, it feels a little light on as a deck builder. But the core gameplay is there, it's good and it's addictive, it's fun, so 8 out of 10. Moving on to our last point, which is X Factor, and the X Factor for Slay the Spy is cost. Is it worth the price of admission? The rough review length time for Steam players is around 40 to 60 hours, and the game currently sits at 35.95 AUD. It's a pretty fair ratio. Some AAA games have a much lower life expectancy and are asking for full price. However, on the inverse of that, there are very similar games to Slay the Spire asking for a lot less. So where does it fit in? Look, judging from my personal experience and expectancy alone, the amount of fun and joy I get from a game in comparison to cost and how long I get out of it, I would say that Slay the Spire fits somewhere in the middle. It's good, it's not great. Priced okay for what you're getting, I've had worse, I've had better, it fits very much in the middle ground there. That's why we're giving it 6 out of 10. If you're looking strictly for bang for your buck, I would first make sure that you've gotten your hands on games like Curse of the Dead Gods, or even Hades if you're one of the very few people who hasn't tried Hades. But if you've played those to death and you're looking for something different, and you can get Slay the Spire on special, then I recommend you do. Pick it up, yeah, 6 out of 10. That's going to wrap things up for our impressions of Slay the Spire. Make sure that you keep an eye out on the MGN website for more guides, news, reviews on everything that is good or bad in the gaming world. We're constantly putting out content on our YouTube also, so make sure you sub there, and we'll see you online. Thanks for listening.